Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next online event at Civil Cyber Forum. My name is Samir Aliyev. I'm the founder and the CEO of Civil Cyber Forum, and this is our first masterclass, actually. And I'm pleased to welcome you today to our masterclass. I will be alone today. I will go through my presentation and explain you the our uh, presentation. Please, for housekeeping, you can ask anytime the questions to use the q a button on the bottom of the your screen and this webinar will be recorded for the purpose to publish on youtube later on if you if you don't want to have your name on anywhere you can also use anonymous uh, messaging and you can send your questions with anonym so Today, we are, we are going to talk about actionable cyber security incident management. What does it mean? That means that today, every single company they are facing or they will face in some, somehow with some cyber incidents, cyber attacks. Therefore, every single company, they need actionable or cyber security incident management. There are several steps. I will go, I'm going to introduce you the, web, the, the presentation today. Let me start with my presentation. This is our agenda today. First, I will talk about the preparing the cybersecurity incident. We will talk about the plan. Then we will go to how to detect and identify potential cyber incidents. After that, the, the next step is handling the actual incidents, how to handle in the company with uh, external help, all the stuff, and also communication during the and after the cybersecurity incidents. There will be last point, which is the follow-ups and closure. Most probably we will not have time for this. And I will share with you the key takeaways end of the webinar or masterclass. Please feel free to send your question for the Q&A session end of the presentation. So let me start with first with key definitions that it's important. Just a moment. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, key definitions are the, the cyber security events. That means that any anything happening in your company related to cyber security that will impact your business, it is cyber security event. Therefore, it is vital to know what kind of events are there in cyber security. And the second one is cyber security incidents. That is, sorry for inconvenience <clears throat> the second one is the, the cyber security incident management which is the uh, incidents which is the incidents are happening to your uh, company or organization a single or series of unwanted and unexpected cyber security events that are likely to compromise your organization's uh, operations the third one is cyber security incident management which is the process for preparing for detecting, reporting, assessing, and responding to dealing with and learning from cyber security incidents. Those are important plans and important definition for your company. After that, we are going to first step, which is preparing for cyber security incident. I will call it from the incidents. I don't want to repeat cyber security incidents all, all the time. You, you need to have a plan. Plan means that before anything happened to your company, you have to have plan on, on the table. Make a plan, not only on, it's, it should be on paper, on your computer, not just in your head. To limit the damage that could happen uh, after the attacks, to reduce the cost and the recovery time and to communicate with both internal and the external stakeholders. Therefore, you need to review your cybersecurity instant response plan. Uh, which is not a statistic, do, static document. It's important to integrate it into your business process and to review, update it regularly. Not only once a year, you have to update it regularly on a yearly basis, uh, once or twice or three times, depends on the size of the company. And the, the cyber security incident process is that we building on your cyber security incident response plan you can define a number of standard operations procedures for common incidents 
that likely to occur within your organization. Such a procedure should explain step by step how to specify issue can be tracked. After that, there are several key elements. Key elements that I would like to talk about this. First of all, you have to know what you are going to protect. It's important. What are the cyber incidents in your organization? Maybe you have to have a, the, the catalog. The cyber incident can happen to your business, your network and system. And who is the responsible direct to the, uh, the, all the incidents? All the companies, when you, are, when you bring to, to, uh, together, you need to address the technical protection and endpoint protection. That means that all the devices you have. Then you need to identify the possible categories of incidents. Where, and you need also invite external partners to help you for mitigation plan. Let's start first. Now what to pro protect. First of all, you have to be aware of that, what you are going to protect. <coughs> Sorry. When your company hit by an incident, the first question that would arise are which are which assets are at risk? You have to know which assets are at risk and which of those assets are vital for your business activity. You will have to decide which assets and you know, which system need your attention first in order to remain in business and keep the damage of your business as low as possible. It's important. Therefore, the following, <coughs> the, 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 the data, the, the information you are seeing here, they are a good idea of the what those are the vital could be to your company. Those are the management, your management system, your organization, your process, knowledge that could be IP, intellectual property data, your the patent data, the people, the information data of your customers, data set has been stolen or uh, disclosed, that, that could happen. Application, that means that your web page is down or defaced infrastructure, that means that the system or network connections are down in your company organization. Financial capital, that, that might be bank details of your clients or your employee or your company's bank accounts. Also, it is good idea to identify vulnerabilities and the potential threats in your company. That will help you to start to design your plan. After having the plan or the, the, the assets on your table, you need to identify the business and the resource that need to protect it. What does it mean? That means that <coughs> You have to determine which are the core business activities that are enable your organization to exist. That, be, that could be your research, that could be your manufacturing, that could be your uh, the process or software. And they will, those processes are achieve, to achieve its, uh, your corporate objectives and generate income that like producing goods or selling the goods or services, delivering the services, all of them are the main identifiable business resource for you. And also for each of those activities, identify which ICT systems. That means that uh, the, the computer and telecommunication systems like database applications, control systems, and the network connections are supporting them. You have to identify them. Then you will go to identify or determine also where these ICT systems are located. Are they in your own premise or in your own services or in the cloud service? Is it private cloud or public cloud? The cloud is in the European Union and Switzerland or in the, in the United States. That should be uh, identifiable. Then you have to identify, when you, when you are identifying these assets, don't forget to follow the information to the third parties your service providers, suppliers, clients, and partners, or industrial control systems flow. All of them will give the guide for the third part, third step at, uh, at, uh, at your plan, which is assigning responsibilities, the responsible people and creating cybersecurity incident response team. This is the most important one but before that, uh, before I started this uh, slides, I would like to share that you have to ensure that the way your system working is documented, and that is 
information is kept up to date and available to incident response team documentation system. That means that all the system should be updated and should be available to incident response, response team. Make sure that your SIM are not just a bunch of cables and the computers for you. It is crucial that your system manager knows how your network works and is able to comp explain it to the experts, to the police or third parties or the CEO. That's why it's important to have the clear plan on the table. Let's start with assigning responsible people to your instant response team. This is the, 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 the key point in your instant response plan. It's important that the roles and the responsibilities in case of cyber security incident are documented on your instant response plan. When you are drafting the, the description of those roles and the responsibilities, you should ask yourself to the, those questions that who is the internal contact point and the external contact point? Who is the managing the incident from business and technical side? This, should, uh, this person should be someone within your company with decision-making authority and who will follow the incidents from beginning until the end. You need someone who will lead the team. Also, who will engage the external incident response partners that you need to assign from time to time or also who will file the complaint with the law enforcement, with police, or in Switzerland with Melani, who will inform them. I will come all those points later on. I will explain you one by one. <clears throat> you will re realize that in order to adequately address the cyber security incidents, different skills are needed to take up the different responsibilities and necessary roles for the efficient incident response. Therefore, I have put, put several skills, responsibilities, and roles here. I would like to talk a little bit about the business decision capability that you need someone who has the decision-making power. That be, could be your CEO, that could be your CFO, or a member of boards, that they are assessing the business impact and act upon it, engaging the right resources, take decision on how to protect and decide if the internet connection of the compromised system can be shut down or not, or when is the most appropriate time. Therefore, this person should decide also when they start cleaning up activities. I will come to those points later on. But the, the another uh, important role here is ICT, technical support staff. All of them are important but ICT technical support staff is they have technical know-how on your system, your firewall, proxies, routers, switches, they can analyze block or restricted data flow in and out of your network. IT operations, information security and the business continuity is important in this point. Also we you need to communicate with legal advice. You have to be compliant with law and the legal Law, uh, legal and uh, legal uh, requirements, sorry. Therefore, you need to have also some kind of relationship with compliance office, with legal office. Also, you have to have very good uh, public relations PR department that they need to communicate the all the instant, all the necessary information with stakeholder groups, stakeholders like customers, press, partners or etc those are the several skills and uh, roles you can take also a screenshot we will share this uh, video later on for your information on the youtube and share the, the link with you per mail afterwards so let's say you have already plan but you are a small company or you have you don't have a lot of budget that to hire all the roles and the responsibilities, you need to hire or call external experts. Also, I would like to mention that, when I will come back to this slides, let's say you are a small company, a minimal instant response team should be included the following roles that you have to have at least two person in your small company. First of all, an instant response manager, this person, 
This person will be managed the incident as soon as it's brought to his attention until it has been contained and remediated. The person has to have knowledge about your organization, what you are doing, your business processes, because he or she will be the first one to take business decision. The second person's ICT technical support staff. ICT, this person needs to have the good knowledge of your ICT infrastructure, as well as he or she will be responsible for the investigation of the indicators, the confirmation of the incidents, and the developing the technical solution to manage the incidents. You need to have at least two persons who can be responsible incidents in your company. But let's say, let's go for next page, which is about externals. Whether your company or organization is an SME, small and medium company or large organization, it's costly always to develop and maintain all needed experts and skills for cybersecurity incidents in-house. That means that you cannot hire all the people keeping your company, paying them and waiting some, somehow the incidents will happen, they will start to work on it. This is especially true for forensic and illegal advisory cybersecurity incident skills. That means that you cannot have someone like a police or a lawyer just sitting and waiting for cyber incidents. So bear in mind that it might be more cost effective to call upon external cybersecurity partners to close up gap in your organization. They will save the money for you. They will reduce the time for diagnosing the incidents. They will help you. And also you will ensure or assure the legal validity chain for custody. You will not lose the time to inform the, the, the official uh, stakeholders. Also, this expert will help you to identify the causes of the incidents and will offer you advice on how to contain, eradicate and remediate the incidents. So when you have to call the experts before the uh, event happens or when the cyber security incident occurs. Of course, it depends on your process. It will be also advisable if you plan your cyber security plan. Uh, if you draft a cyber security plan, you need to call them for during the preparation phase and get their advice. Sometimes also you can uh, talk with authorities uh, for investigation. Let's say incident happened, and you need to talk or cooperate with police or in Switzerland with Melanie. Now it is National Cyber Security Center of Switzerland. That uh, those parties are like industry regulators also can help you. Let's say uh, the the Privacy Commission in Switzerland, the Information Security Commission, with, which is ADOP, or as I mentioned, police might be important when you are confronted with cyber security incident or criminal nature of the case. Uh, the police might ask you, your organization not to shut, shut your system down right away. That means that if you do, the attacker will notice and retreat, which often makes it impossible to track, trace him afterward or the criminals afterward. For your organization or company, the fastest way to get back to your business might be shut down immediately and then start with the clean slate. But this is also should be communicated with uh, regulators and the external experts. So on your plan, you have to have uh, contact list. Contact list means that uh, you can Looking, you can look for the right professions at the right time. Is it, is sometimes it's impossible. Let's say incident happened, it's a Saturday evening, and it might help limit the physical and reputational damage for your company if you have really backup contact information from the critical person. A contact list that includes all of those people and the organization will help you in this process. This is contained names, roles, contacts, and backup details of the different persons of the cyber incident response team. You can have their mobile number, you can have their you know, private telephone number, you can have their physical address for traditional mailing and the packages. Make sure that 
You also have the alternative contact options like fax number, if possible, secondary mail addresses that it might be urgent to call them uh, for the action. Therefore, uh, I would say that what another method of secure and making the information readily available is should be encrypted. That means that if you have those information, it should be safely safeguarded and encrypted. And only the certain people like chief information officers or chief technology officers, they should have an access to those data. That uh, it shouldn't be available for everyone. So let's say that you have also a contact list. Now we are going to prepare your communication strategy. Communication strategy means that you need to communicate all the incidents with media, with your clients, with your the legal authorities use your police in Switzerland. Therefore, communication is a vital component of every step of your cyber security incident response. You want to control the communication flow to ensure the right information is communicated at the right time, at the right moment, by the right people in your company to the right receivers, to external stakeholders. The, this is a valid was for internal communication and the communication toward to, to external partners. I would recommend, recommend that coordinating all the external communication both with legal and public affairs or public relationship uh, representative in your company, that you have to have one voice, one uh, communication channel for internal and external. So during the incident response activities, there will be constant need to information from many different stakeholders. Your partners, your clients, employee, they might ask information from your side. Each of them will need to different type of information. That means that your employee will ask another information or your partner or member of board or senior management will ask another information. Make your own list of potential stakeholders. One, two, three, four. I will come to this part later on. <coughs> sorry, and ensure that the right contact information is available, that uh, the channel that you will communicate them, it should be not that the organization should have, your organization should have this contact information available, but shouldn't always communicate with all parties. It's, it depends on the situation, depends on your internal policy, whom to say what. So we go for three steps. First is internal stakeholders, the second is external stakeholders, and third one is official stakeholders. Who are the inter internal stakeholders? They are senior managers. Well, which kind of information, what type of information you need to share or they need from your side? The, your senior manager should know what's impacted, well, what is the response, how you reacted, and what's the expected outcome and when will operation be back to normal. You have to inform your board about the process, outcomes, and the, the, the timeline you go back to normal. Also, impacted business managers. You might have the senior managers, they are uh, impacted, and you they need information that uh, when will normal operation will resume. They need to operate, and therefore you have to inform that next week or next day uh, or after two months, who knows what happened to the company. Also the employee that what should to do your employee, what they have to do during the uh, incident and uh, how they have to react and the, how long this situation expected to last. You have to inform this is internal stakeholders and also external, first of all, media. Media needs information. It depends on the, the, the impact of the incident. Statement, the incident and its impact will shape your uh, information that you need to share with media. For big companies or big profile of uh, incidents, the media might be involved. Therefore, prepare your pr press release and share with them if necessary. And that should come from your communication plan. And it should be also discussed with legal department. Also, you need to, to inform your customers. Many cyber incidents are happening because of uh, data, especially your customer's data. Therefore, now also they are under the 
general data protection regulation in the European Union, also the Civis Data Protection Act, requires you to inform your clients if something happened to their data. You need to inform your customers uh, if they are impacted by cybersecurity incidents, their data is stolen or credit cards are stolen, you need to inform them what kind of data are stolen and where their personal data lost or stolen. Are they potentially a primary target to attacks? Attacker, they can target your customers or they can just encrypt or make a ransom against your company to encrypt your customer's data. They should, therefore, you have to give them clear information. And in some cases, if you have representative office in the European Union or if you are processing the residents of European Union, unions, you need to inform the regulators within 72 hours. That means that you process the data in Germany or the company operating in Germany, you process data in Switzerland, you have to inform your controller, data controller as soon as possible. Or you are a controller, you process the individuals in European Union, you have to inform German Data Protection Authority within 72 hours. That's very crucial, but this is the regulation. Also suppliers, they are an important chain in your business and uh, you, you need to go to the partner companies who can help you. <coughs> All of them are external stakeholders. Let's go to the official stakeholders who are the very important right now. Data Protection Commission in Switzerland, which is ADOP. If there's a data breach, something happened in your company, you need to inform them. Also the Melody, which is now they changed the format. Now it's National Cyber Security Center of Switzerland. You, I will come to, to those information, the contact details and which kind of information you need to share with them. You need to inform them when cybersecurity is happening in your company. Therefore, it's good for you to have their contact data. There's a form how to report, uh, file the report. It's good for you to have all the information on your hand to inform the official stakeholders. Maybe in some, in certain cases, you will go to a digital criminality police station. Also, let's say you are a financial institution, you need to inform FINMA or another industrial uh, regulators or association should be informed during the incidents. So communication. <coughs> Why communication is important? Because in order to know what to communicate to whom, and your organization should assess the potential impact of cybersecurity incidents. They are like uh, only internal or external stakeholders concerned, or is there a data lake? Depending on the impact, your cybersecurity incident communication will be will have different objectives. And those are the objectives are you are seeing now right now communicating that aims to resolve and handle the incidents. That should be third parties or official uh, regulators. Communication that aims to limit reputational damage, your customers, partners, media, also compliance, uh, to be compliant with law and regulations. That means that, again, you have to inform your customers, you have to communicate to regulators in Switzerland or European Union. Those are your the objectives that you have to use the communication. So there are several possible ways and you can choose one of them. Therefore, you have to have those channels like emails, a website, telephones, hotlines, in person maybe you send them brief, you send them the, the, the letter to communicate all the methods. Uh, that should, all the channels should be on your incident response plan. So we are going to the second part of the incident response, incident management. Now we have a plan on hand. Now it's time to detect and identify potential cyber incidents. How we are going to do it? You know, cyber incidents could be diverse. Therefore, first you need to have categories of incidents. To start, so it's a good idea to define cyber incident 
cyber security incident and their related terms within your organization. That will make easy for you to, to know what's happening and how to react it. So therefore, to be able to detect and identify cyber security incidents, you need to have at least an idea of what you are looking for. Therefore, having a list of categories of incidents that are most likely hit your organization is no luxury, it's important, it's obligation. Further, furthermore, when you detect the cyber events, it's often difficult to know how bad the consequences will form to stars. Also, you can uh, detect the incidents after several months, after several years. Therefore, it is vital to know what can happen to your company. Those are the, some of the cyber incidents. Cyber attacks can happen to your company. That's uh, mainly known. Also, I would like to give some examples, which is very high level and you cannot expect that that could happen. Uh, in 2013, the Russia host the meeting of G20 leaders. And at the end of this event, all the participants, all the leaders from the world and the G20 countries, uh, they received a gift bag containing USB pen drive and a mobile phone charger device. But most probably they were the like USB spy, but also the Kremlin has always denied that both devices were reported capable to secretly downloading the information. All the devices they received from Kremlin, from the Russian government, they were spy devices and uh, downloading the secure security information, such as emails, text messaging, or phone calls from laptops and the phones. That's also a kind of cyber incident that's also happening to the world leaders. If it's happening to the world leaders, it could happen to your SME company or medium large company in Switzerland or anywhere in the world. Also, Switzerland is a rich country and the cyber criminals knows that money is here and uh, the financial motivations, the, the, the first one, the first motivation for cyber criminals. Therefore, please be careful whenever you are downloading, opening or visiting the web page. For example, you, your company can receive an email with an invoice and attached that looks like one of your supplier. We, and the company accountant, your accountant, uh, clicks on the attachment and a few seconds later on you receive the message that all your information has been encrypted. If you want the key to unlock the encryption, you need to pay that much amount in Bitcoin because they don't want to uh, show their identity. So that could happen. It's happening. Maybe it will happen today or tomorrow in Switzerland or somewhere else. Therefore, the company should be ready with their plan, with their security options and with their team to fight against the cyber criminality. So methods of detecting the incidents. You need some methods to detect the incidents. First of all, for me also, it's human firewall, human factor is the most important one, I'm sorry. The people are often considered the weakest link in your company when it comes to cybersecurity. We have our also great potential to help an organization detect and identify cybersecurity incidents. Make sure that every member of your organization is aware of cybersecurity risks and of the role of they can play in detecting them. That means that turn them into your human firewall. Every member of your organization should know how to report if they not something abnormal on their computer or mobile devices. Make sure that the contact details of doing so are easily accessible for them, that they can report and contact in person to uh, react all those abnormal uh, processes. How to organize instant reporting by personal? You have 10,000 people and you, you need to organize the instant reporting a system in your company, also your partners. First of all, you have to have a phone number should be established for reporting emergency. That should be hotline or cyber line, you call it. An email address for informal incident reporting 
phone number, email address, and the web-based forms that are formal incident responding. There should be several options for your employee and partners to report anything happened and they are aware of it. The second one is technology. Technology is one of the main enablers when it comes to <clears throat> fastening your incident detection, investigation, eradication, and the recovery. When an incident has occurred, ad hoc development, deployment of technology is it still possible. You will use some several, several technologies, but not thousands of, thousands of them. Uh, your investigation will often be limited to current events if you have only technology or only endpoint protection. You have to use all the points here, what you are saying on, the, on your screen. Also, endpoint protection is important, which is a device that's connected to your endpoints, the device that connect your organization network. So laptops, smartphones, and office printers also. Each of those devices are potential entry point for cyber criminals. Therefore, it's important that all those devices are adequately protected. You will use detection tools. There are several tools that you can check on Google and implement in your system. Also, network is important. A good start would be to be implementation of institution preventive system, such as SNORT network, IDC sensors, and other technologies that will help your organization already uh, for detecting the, the, the systems. Also, what I can Incidents, pardon. What I can advise here to avoid malicious code, keep your software, virus scanner, etc., up to date, VPN system up to date, regularly update your software or install patch when they are available. And please don't use unsupported version of software, for example, a Microsoft XP or Windows 2013 three or something like this that you cannot update and uh, it's no longer protected against new known malwares. This is important how to fight against the uh, cyber attacks. So let's say we have detected cyber incidents. Now we are going to handle the actual incidents. How you are going to handle the incident? This is the, the important one. You have to decide very quickly. You have to decide immediately within half an hour, within one hour, it depends on the management process. When actual incident is detected, it's very important to evaluate the risk fast in order to take the right measures. The cybersecurity incident manager should be informed immediately and to have a meeting with cybersecurity incident response team. That means that if your organization has one, if not, you need to go to external partners. The cybersecurity incident manager and his team will report to CEO or, or the board of the company who will have to validate their decision and give the budget. So after the detection and incident, it is key to collect all available information on the activities around the instance time frame. You need to record everything what you are collecting during the incident time frame. Central collection or archiving of security information like system logs, firewall policy logs provides the analyst with easy access to this information. Important is that uh, factors to take into account are integrity of information and uh, indexation. That will help you later on for forensic, for, for police investigation. So you have to decide disconnect or watch and learn. What does it mean disconnect? Will you shut down your system and the connection, the network in order to be able to recover as fast as possible? Or you will watch and learn, you will continue to operate for the time being and monitor the activities of the cyber criminals in order to be able to perform advanced forensics and gather as much as possible evidence for your process. So that's difficult decision. And therefore you have to have some balance between all those decision-making.
What are those balance? Uh, how can you balance the, to decide either disconnect or continue to your business? Therefore, you have to have a clear view what could happen if the incident were not contained. You have to know what kind of data or information could be stolen or damaged. Is the attacker attack or breach doing immediate severe damage to your organization? That will give you clear direction which option you need to choose it. Is there any potential damage or thief already happened? You are aware of it? And is it necessary to, uh, to alert the, the cyber attackers? And they, they know that you now you are aware of attack and they can either encrypt your system or disclose, uh, uh, close their access. Therefore, you need to decide, you need to have the balance. In some cases, returning direct to business as usual will not be possible at all. The companies, they lose all the data and it's not possible to bring them back. When this happens, the objective of containment should be to make the best effort to return to functional as usual, to get the system usable by preserving access for legitimate users while locking out of attackers. During an incident, a pressure will be very high from management, from board, from partners. Therefore, to avoid unnecessary mistakes, it's however to very important to take a step back and think before you act. This is mainly for your uh, chief information security officers or chief technology officers. I don't want to, yes. Now we are going to addiction and the cleanup. Let's say you have, you know what happened and you need to clean up, but please do not start the cleanup before you have a full picture of the incident. That means that you should start by determining its root cause, why it happened and how long it could, it could happen or it stay in your system. This is not an easy task for your organization. Furthermore, you should make sure that you have at least looked at all machines in the same way your company is using, they might also be infected. Whether the decision is taken to start eradicating the incidents, it's important to be fast, synchronized and agile in order to give the advisory as little chance as possible to respond. Therefore, you will run, you will start with running your virus scanner or spyware scanner. You will update all the signature, deleting the malwares, disabling breached user, breached user accounts and the email addresses, changing passwords of the accounts are affected by breach, identifying and mitigating all, all the uh, vulnerabilities that were exploited identifying security gaps, also informing your employee about the threats that they will take an action against it, informing external stakeholders, that's part of your addiction, <coughs> sorry. Media and your customers should be informed as well to be aware of it, it's good for transparency. <coughs> also, you can do individual files can be detected uh, the, or delete from your system by antivirus solutions. These solutions should be open to accept specific virus definitions provided by you. Phishing emails can be blocked on the mail gateway by blocking based on sender. The mail rely on parts of the content. Those are the specific steps that you need to, to do for cleanup. For uh, further information, we can also talk in another webinar or another masterclass. So now we are coming to recovery. I need to check also the date that we have last 15 minutes. I have to be a little faster. For recovery, you have three options. Either you will clean the malicious uh, factors and replace the compromised files with clean version. That will be fast, that will be cost effective, but you might leave undiscovered uh, steps behind.
The second one, restore from back, backup. That is like recover time is medium and it is also cost effective. But the last one, rebuilding the system or environment from the zero, that will be very slow and it's not time efficient and they're very costly and the chance to lose all your data. This is, however, the only way to be 100% sure that you got rid of the attack or uh, malicious uh, codes. And it starts, shows that very often incidents are only revealed after several months. That means that you will not immediately discover the incidents. It will take several months or maybe years. <clears throat> Therefore, you need to ask yourself that how far back your organizations or companies backup go. That's important. Uh, once again, if you don't have the necessary expertise within your organization, with a company, call upon external experts, partners, and don't forget to check if your cyber insurance covers its cost. It's part of the cyber incident plan. The cyber insurance, I didn't want to touch it because it's also long uh, discussion. This is the, the la almost last part, communicating during the cyber incident response. We have talked already, but I would like to share with you here 4W. 4W, what does it mean that, that to whom will your organization communicate? You have to identify it and which information your company, your organization will communicate to whom? This is also important on your plan and who will communicate? Internal, external, your CEO or PR manager or lawyers and when your organization will communicate the timeline for communication in internal and external partners. Those are the important parts and they will help you. I will, I'm coming back to uh, Melanie. Uh, if you have any incidents in your company, you are allowed to share information with National Cyber Security Center in Switzerland, which is Melanie, Melanie at admin at ch. And there, there are information for individuals, there are information for companies. Also, you will find a reporting form for, you, for yourself or for your company. And uh, the, the National Cyber Security Center, I have heard that they receive weekly 300 notifications from CVS companies that they want to publish or communicate their incidents. That's already a high number for a small country, but I'm sure there are many companies that they don't notify their incidents to external parties or internal point parties, and they just uh, try to avoid or pay the cyber criminals or somehow they lose the data, that could happen. So once you communicate to Melanie or National Cyber Security Center, you have to give some information. You have to have, you have to include some information that they will help you for investigation. They will advise you. Those are the list of information that you need to communicate to official regulators in Switzerland or in European Union, uh, where you are, those are the basics. The, these are not from Melanie, that, that's my uh, prediction, but uh, must be information out there. And if you want, you can take screenshot before I will go to next slides. So incidents, follow up and the closure. You will learn from your uh, failure, you will learn from your experience that's important all cyber security incidents like any other incidents need to be properly closed you have to close them and it's very important that lessons are learned from each incident you have to make the story you have to make the process and the monitoring and to evaluate for future improvement all post incident review is a very useful documentation because it shows actual data and a real impact it can help your organization to evaluate your cyber security response plan and budget and it will help you to update it, keep it up to date and make better budgeting or the financial support for the incident team or to hire the new team member or to have the external partners or invest in technology. That will help you to be ready for the next incident and there are many other objectives and uh, the solutions 
we unfortunately we don't have time for this we have only last 20 minutes before we go to kinesa q a session there are 10 key takeaways all the takeaways that you have to keep in your mind you have to always think twice and you have to talk with your colleagues with your manager with your board that there's no simple uh, simple one size solution you have to have a specific solution for each of your process and this is the responsibility of your top management this is di cyber security is directly responsibility of uh, ceo and the research shows that 90 percent of the cyber security the ceos or uh, the leaders they cannot interpret cyber security reports and the 40 percent of the leaders uh, the the ceos they say that they are not responsible for cyber security that's not true every member of your organization or company should involve the process and uh, you have to have back, backups all the process you see here you have to document every step during the incident from a to z that you can analyze and take your lessons from there also last but not least educate and keep up to date yourself and your employee education is the most important one here and to be educated to know what's going on in your company to know your system to know the, the your uh, the attackers to know the the real threats that could happen that will help you to be safe side on safe side uh, on cyber security in the cyberspace i would say that there is there are no company that they are cyber secure but you can do your best to stay safe and secure during this high cyber attack season after the corona crisis those are my presentation for today thank you very much for your time it was my pleasure to talk to you again and this is my information if you need any information any further clarification or discussion you can reach out to me you see my email address here also this is our web page swisscyberform.com we have another uh, master classes webinars we have really good useful blogs and articles for your information our next master class will be end of the july 20th 28th of the july the experts from united states we will organize master class real-time ethical hacking that means that we will do penetration testing it will take two hours if you are interested in how happens the attacks how the attackers the the, the, the hackers can attack your system you welcome to join our next master class learn more get the, some insights and be ready for your security in the future now i'm ready to answer your question if there are questions let me close the presentation now and go the questions yes we have one question sorry i need to open another screen thank you very much Samuel, for this very instructive presentation my question is what would you say to top management to get their commitments to cyber security Yes, top management, as I mentioned, they are the directly responsible for cybersecurity and they have to be aware of the real threat. They have to invest their team, they have to invest their employee and technology. It's not only about the technology. Some companies, they have 150 applications. It's like jungle, but the employee doesn't know how to use it or they, they collect malicious attacks or phishing emails. Therefore, education, training, cyber culture cyber awareness privacy culture in the company is the most important one we are as a human the weakest chain in the security therefore training your people employee is the best and one of the important commitment to cyber security so i would like to thank you all of you we are already on time and it was my pleasure to talk to you and uh, looking forward to have to host you on our next webinars and events have a nice day and stay safe thank you thank you ahmed